Welcome to Gen 4 Zotetique's West German Pottery YouTube channel. The items you see here are from the Ngobi series by Rusha, although Ngobi works were also done by Quito, Kishli, Mirai, and occasionally other companies. Ngobi is distinguished by the matte or semi-matte background, which has a light sandpaper texture. An artist would then incise the basic outline and then that artist or another would do the primary work in enamels. You will find variations because even though there was a guide to work with, artists were allowed to do minor or sometimes fairly major variations on a design. So you look for the ones that are a little more interesting in the design and of course the ones that are well executed because there are some pretty sloppy ones out there. You can see a number of the post-war influences. Uh, many in this case because this was relatively soon after the war and uh, people were still... well, okay. Welcome to the Gen 4's Auditeeks West German Pottery YouTube channel. What I'm showing here today are examples from the Rusha in Gobi series. Uh, in Gobi was also done by Quito, Kishli, Mirai, and sometimes a few other companies, but Rusha was one of the biggest producers. It's distinguished by the matte or semi-matte background, which has a light sandpaper texture. An artist would then incise the primary design into the plate and then either that artist or another would apply the enamel decoration. As you might suspect, you'll find a great deal of variation in quality and also in the design because even though there was a pattern to work from, artists were allowed to vary that sometimes slightly, sometimes fairly major alterations. Uh, they are typically marked, well with Rusha you'll often see the shape number for the plate, the company name, handerbite, which just indicates that there is handwork, in this case in the decoration, the pattern name, and quite often the artist's initials. Unfortunately we don't know what initials goes, goes with what artist. So far no one has found any record of most of the people who did this type of work. The uh, Toreador plate is a little harder to find and it also shows the interest in exotic scenes, something to take you away from post-World War II Germany because it was not uh, the happiest time or the brightest landscape for quite a while. And these plates came out largely starting around 1956. They were very popular through the mid-60s. And some seem to have stayed in the Rusha catalogs well into the 70s. Uh, the Heron design actually shows some of the Japanese influence because in addition to exotic scenes, people were looking for something more soothing. On the other hand, the Paris design may appear to be somewhat uh, lighthearted at first, but if you look at it and think about it, it actually is referring to some of the darker aspects of post-World War II Europe. Next we have the China design, which is also a little difficult to find. Uh, again, showing something of a pastoral scene, although uh, carrying water is only soothing if you're looking at somebody else doing it. Uh, the five to about seven and a half inch sizes are the most common. The smaller, about three inch size, is harder to find. And anything ten inches or above is hard to find, especially the ones up at about the 13, 14 inch diameter. Um, although they are most often found in plates, and Gobi works were done uh, in vases, which are harder to find, and in designs such as this uh, Rusha bowl with the Morocco design. Now this is a little bit of a quirk because it's 
made on a Rusha plate, but <laughs> it's made by Saramano. Uh, some of their early work, they really didn't do much in terms of Ngobi, so this little fella is not easy to find. Overall, you could put together quite a collection of just the Ngobi works and have a lot of fun doing so. I hope you enjoyed this look at one aspect of Rusha, and I hope you'll check out more of the videos as I add them. And please, check out the website. There's a link in the description below the video. So long.